So today we are rescaping my dad's 160 litre cichlid tank. There's a variety of cichlids in here. Some are older fish, some are newer fish. We don't know all the different types, although we have had a guess at some of them. So we're draining down the majority of the water first. We want to keep some of it to put back in so that the fish are as comfortable as possible in their new environment. And there's a variety of live plants in here which has been recently added. Cichlids are notorious for moving about plants and pulling them up. So we're hoping that using more epiphytes and stem plants might help. Equally, things like the vallis are a little bit less tasty for the cichlids. We're going to be reusing most of the rocks that are going back in here and Dad has got some other rocks that he's found that's quite similar. Just smooth river rocks for the most part and a few feature stones that he's found. So now to catching the fish. We're gonna get the biggest one first so that he's out of the way and then spend more time catching the little ones. Now we've got a bucket of the water that we pulled out of the tank, which the heater will be popped into so that they can remain at temperature while we're redoing the scape. We've also put all of the Java fans in there for them so it gives them a bit of hiding space. So there's the two large ones, now to catch the little ones. Should we take some more water out? Yes. So we drained a bit more of the water just to get it down for the smaller fish who were navigating quite effectively around and we used this opportunity to kick up some of the dirt that was in the old gravel um, so that it would make it easier to clean later. And eventually, after a little while, we managed to catch all of them. So we won't be putting all of the substrate back in because there's a lot of glass beads and multicoloured pebbles in here. What I will be doing off camera is filtering them through a makeshift sieve, which is a flower pot, to get the small bits of gravel out so that we can reuse, which means that there's more beneficial bacteria in the tank. Plus giving the tank a little bit of a clean while we're doing it. So we've used aqua soil in bags for this one so that the cichlids don't kick it up when they rummage around in the sand and gravel, which they are quite prone to doing. And we've popped it in spots where we're going to be hopefully putting some of the stem plants. Here I'm popping in some root tabs to just give the substrate a bit of a boost to help the plants grow strong roots. Then capping off with gravel. This is the gravel that was from the tank originally and will give a good layer of beneficial bacteria. It doesn't matter that the coloured pebbles are still included in this because it will all be covered by sand. So just banking it up at the back to make sure that there's a nice sense of depth. Dad had said that he wanted a island feature and he'd already experimented with the rocks um, outside piling them up so that they created a little cave and holes for the cichlids to hide in. It was a little bit closer to their natural environment so we were trying to balance the rocks in a way that meant that there were nice holes for them to swim through. Yeah. 
We didn't have any super glue, unfortunately, which would have been better. This is underwater silicon, uh, but unfortunately it didn't set quick enough for it to actually help holding things in position. So we just made sure that they were secure with a tap test. And this is one of the two air stones that dad has, which helps give a little bit of a screen for the cichlids to hide from each other. It needs to be relatively strongly buried beneath the gravel again, because the cichlids like pulling things up. So popping in the second air stone. We're just using standard play sand. This has been originally washed before it was bagged and then dad washed it a second time. just attaching the inlet and outlet for the filter which is a external canister filter and here we're tucking the epiphytes into crevices in the rock I'm trying to make sure that I wedge them as securely as possible as again we don't have the super glue to be able to attach them which would have been more ideal for the cichlids um, but at least for the moment they can go where they are So popping the java ferns in the centre just gives a little bit more height to the island and just creating a bit more interest with different leaf shapes by popping the anubiuses close to them. Giving everything a bit of a spray down to make sure it doesn't dry out. This is the Amazon sword. Again, because the cichlids tend to dig them up, I've tried to tuck them behind the rock as best as possible when I bury the roots. Similarly, this is a second sword. Just playing about with some arrangements for plants. Dad wanted to try and cover up the inlet and the airline for the air stone as much as possible. A couple of smaller bits of Anubius here and Dad uh, starting to put some water in the tank so that we can get the sand to settle a bit more. It's harder to lay out substrate when it's wet initially but as soon as you put the water in it levels itself out. And I'm just popping the valise over on the left hand side again to hopefully give a bit of cover for the inlets but also to provide some hiding space for the smaller cichlids. And the last plant going in is a little Cryptocorani parva, which we've used as an accent plant in the front. So we've popped the nerites in. You can see them rapidly climbing the glass. We used uh, standard tap water for the majority of it and then topped it up with the water we took from the tank. So some water conditioners going in there and some of the quick start beneficial bacteria. We wanted to get the fish in at this point because it had been about five or six hours that they'd been out of the tank. It'll effectively be what we call a fishing cycle. So Dad will be doing water tests every day and changing the water if the parameters are not quite right. And as you can see here, we thought we'd lost a couple of fish, um, but it turned out that actually the first thing they did was utilize the gaps in the rock that Dad had created for them to hide, which is perfect as it's what we wanted. So adding just a little bit of plant fertiliser there to help give the epiphytes a bit of a boost. So this is the next day. I asked Dad to do a little bit of video. You can see that the water's still cloudy. That's because we've put quite a lot of sand and the rocks. And although both were cleaned 
quite significantly prior. There is still going to be a little bit of dirt leaching into the water from there, but the filter will take out most of it and it will do a water change if it remains too misty. But as you can see, the fish are really enjoying it. It looks really natural in the scape. What you can see though is that the fish have done their thing and they have pulled up some of the epiphytes. So I've suggested to dad that he super glue these to some small pebbles so that they don't pull them up. And the colours of the fish really pop against this environment. Cichlids aren't always the easiest fish to keep and I don't personally have any but I love watching these guys. They're proper mischievous and they're really pretty to look at. I've really enjoyed this build with dad and he loves the look of the scape and I hope you've enjoyed our process too. So thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I'll see you next time for some more fish fun.